Hey, you guys, it's Reset Sunday, and we're just giving some topics to discuss in the future. Um, we're going to discuss things that has been helpful, things that hasn't necessarily been helpful. This is kind of like an open spill. So this is the time to pour into me and say, hey, this is what I need help with. You know, I'm not receiving assistance and help here or I'm getting caught up there. So that's what I need to know so that as we go into this next month, we can be more prepared and I can do more research and give you what you need. That is what today is about. So, so far, I have detoxing the infused water recipe, talking more about protein, meatless Mondays, and the sweetless Miss tea. I need to put down the sweet days, sweetless days. So, what is a, a, a sweet substitute for, for when you get that craving? Okay, that's a good one. Sweet substitute. So let me write that down. That's a good one. Okay. So sweet substitutes. But overall, focus days do help is what it seems like, correct? Focus. Yes. Okay. I think the focus days did help as well. Um, when you have like a day that you can focus on something different or a different way of eating. Did anybody struggle in the area of like recipes? I know that I was putting links to recipes and stuff, but like whenever it comes to piecing everything together, where are we getting caught up? Is it in preparation? Is it in planning? Is it in the implementation portion of it? Because, you know, you go through these different phases whenever it's time for you to prepare for your week, which is why we talk about Reset Sunday. We hop on this call, we talk about different stuff, and we say, okay, this is the plan. From the plan, it's time to prep. From the prep, it's time to implement the plan, period. So I'm seeing in the chat, and y'all can throw this in the chat, and or you can come off mute and talk. It is completely open today. No stress to nobody. Hey, Jada. Hey, Tangie. I didn't even see y'all ladies had joined. Hey, ladies. Um, I don't know where y'all came in at, but I'm just trying to make sure that I cover and um, answer any questions that you're feeling like I haven't covered. And I also want to know... Um, things that you feel would be more helpful whenever it comes to Reset Sunday, because that's where I started with. Is Reset Sunday helpful? And, um, you know, in regards to like your nutrition and the fitness, you can even talk about the fitness too. That's totally fine. I just want to make sure I'm improving my program from month to month. Um, so definitely give me feedback. I'm open to all of it. Y'all know how I am. I thrive off feedback. Okay, so the prepping... Okay, so whenever it comes to the prepping, that is an issue. Is anybody else having any issues with preparation and or planning? Are those any issues for you? Like what the plan is gonna be, what we gonna do, how we gonna get there? Anybody else got those issues right now? Yeah, sometimes like this past week for me was like, it was just difficult. I, I number one, it's my fault because I didn't plan. And so every day I'd be like struggling, like, oh God, what am I gonna do today? Like, oh, I gotta figure something out. I just, so I think um, it was just, just, just tired, just wanting a break, uh, you know, just wanting a break from all reality, if that makes any kind of sense. Do you feel- that It was getting on my nerves. Mm. <laughs> do you feel like you have, um, in regards to becoming, like trying to change your lifestyle and transition from one way and just really trying to seek these goals, do you feel like it becomes so, I don't know, I wanna say like a checklist, like you're always having to gravitate towards a checklist. Is it feeling that way? Is it feeling like you're transitioning naturally? Are you lost? Like, give me that real, give me the real deal, Holy Field. That's what I need. How are you feeling? And that's open to anybody. Miss T, you can respond. Uh, no, I think I think the transition is okay. I mean, you, you know, sometimes sometimes it's a struggle. Um, you know, there's certain vegetables I like, and so you, you know, meatless Monday at times can be kind of like, oh, what am I gonna do? Oh, but um, I think I've kind of I've kind of uh, grown accustomed to it now. If that makes sense. Okay. But, you know, there's still those days. Like I said, this week was like, I was on that struggle bus almost every day. Mm -hmm. Almost every day I was on that struggle bus, like to the point that yesterday I just broke down and be like, you know what? 
I'm off and I'm just going to be off today and I know it and I'm going to be okay with it. I look, I had a cheddar biscuit from Red Lobster. I just decided I had a coupon. I mean, not a coupon, but a gift card. And I know I was wrong. <laughs> but the bishop said he was going to give me forgiveness. Oh, God. The <laughs> trainer and your nutritionist don't get you forgetting this. You're supposed to be on a whole challenge, a 30-day challenge. I was about to say, what happened to the challenge? I know, didn't I say I was on the struggle bus all this week? So yesterday was the, <laughs> yesterday was the be all end all. I was like, I hadn't had any bread. And I was like, mm. I was so hungry. I was like, I'm just, I'm eating this piece of this one cheddar biscuit. I'm going to eat this cheddar biscuit. I'm going to be like, oh my God. It, I tell you, it felt like it was the best, the best piece of bread to the best piece of bread ever in my entire life. I bet it did. It, ooh, I was like, oh my gosh. But you know, to the point, I was back. I did feel kind of bad after I did it, but then I was like, well, you know, look, I, I'm just going to be off. I'm just I'm just going to have to come clean and be like, I've gone, what, 20, 20 days, no bread, and then yesterday. I was like, oh, okay, well. Y'all that's why the that's why the bishop is giving me forgiveness. He says, it's not how you go. It's like when you get to get back up. So I got back up today. <laughs> you get bishop. back up again. You go okay. Back. We thank you, thank you, Appreciate you welcome. Just sing it from the court. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. So, okay. <laughs> and I took note of that to Miss Terry about um, because we do hit those weeks where it's just like you're off. Like I had a week, what mine always happens whenever I'm PMSing, period. It does. Me too. Um when it's time for that cycle to come right on on and come through, I'm looking around blinking like, ah. Oh, what's in the pantry and I actually had to stop just purchasing stuff because I was like oh yeah let me just get that just in case you know whenever I get off or you know if I want a little something something I can have that to snack on or whatever but the problem was that I was abusing that I was abusing that habit I was abusing that privilege for myself so I had to just refrain from purchasing those things as much as like a safe haven. Like, oh yeah, let me just keep it in. I ain't gonna have it today, but just in case. Well, just in case what? Like, why are you getting that? Just in case what? What? <laughs> well, just in case what? No, you don't have a reason to do that. But um, that just was personal for me to do. That's something that I had to do. But you're gonna have those weeks. Um, you're human. I don't know one person who's just perfect 365 days of the year. I have not met that person a day in my life out of all the professionals, doctors, uh, people who study heavily within nutrition, your top trainers and everything. Everybody has their times, but you have to be more consistently on than you do off. So Miss Terry, I'm going to use you as an example. You can't go into this week with, a, oh yeah, it was just... It's just one of those weeks again. You'll never get back on. You know what I mean? You'll always, right. get, again, I'm just using you as an example. No, 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 I understand. Yeah. Chasing your tail. So you do have to crack the whip on yourself. And that's just, I mean, that's just life. This is, y'all know we say this every week. It's a lifestyle change. It takes a lifetime of work. It does. You're always going to have to be intentional with the things that you're doing. It's not going to be perfect. Aisha, I heard, well, I see that you put, you feel overwhelmed at times. And I want you to let me know, and you can put this in the chat if that would be helpful. But um, is it because you have a lot to do? Is it because you're trying to transition in? It's like, okay, I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do that. So is it that checklist? Um, I'm going to call it the checklist complex. Um, are you feeling like that? And it's like, that can, it seems like so much because Reagan, you're saying, make sure you drink water and make sure you get enough sleep and make sure you eat your vegetables and, you know, whatever, whatnot. I'm going to call that checklist complex. Let me write that down. I like that. I'm like, what the coin that checklist complex. Anybody? Well, Miss Reagan, can I, can I, um, can I, uh, give you a shout out? Yes. What's up? I love a shout out. I'm gonna give you a shout out, Miss Reagan, because you know I said this was I was on the struggle bus this week. Oh, your nails look nice, Miss Reagan. And you know what? I re remember, Miss Reagan. I did call you when I was having that moment. It's like Miss Reagan, I had about two pints of ice cream, but I'm not gonna eat them. But I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator, okay? Mm -hmm. And I called because I was having a struggle moment. And you know we did talk, and I have it. I didn't open them. I'm still sitting in that refrigerator. 
I mean, that, that freezer, freezer. They're still in my freezer, unopened. But I am going to get a scoop when uh, April rolls around. I'm going to get a scoop. Okay. I can actually live with that. Okay. Because honestly, I'm really proud of you. And Aisha, I'm going to go back to you too. But I am proud of you, Miss Terry. Um, that's a real life example. Miss Terry called. Uh, this was earlier this week. I can't remember the day, but she called and was like, yeah, oh, it's just one of those weeks. We all go through these weeks whatever it can be work it can be home it can be car it can just be just one of those weeks schedule it doesn't matter just one of those weeks y'all know what I'm talking about one of those weeks Miss Terry was just having one of those weeks this uh can't get over the hump like uh just it's I'm blah and when she called and we talked about it and she was like listen I just bought two pints of ice cream. Now, Miss Terry, two pints of ice cream. That why? I had to have choices. You know, the bishop likes choices. No, Miss Terry, don't neither one of y'all need no choices. <laughs> and, oh, and then, you know, I have to get this. You know, I just had two pints of ice cream or whatever. And that was that. So I was like, listen, don't open that ice cream. Just move it out of sight, out of my and I, I I will never know if she opened it or not. Well, she just told us that she didn't. But even getting off the con, I mean, I after that conversation throughout, I was just telling her, don't do it. You know, whatever you do, just don't. Do it. But that's the whole point of having your accountability partner, your trainer, that person where you like, listen, I'm on the, I'm on the edge. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to leap off of the edge of doing good and being on point the way that I need to be on point. And that's just the moment that she was having. So I'm glad to learn that you were not, you just didn't jump off the edge. You stayed on point. You did have that cheddar biscuit. Yeah, and it was good. It was good, but mm -hmm. not going to, don't dive into that ice cream. And y'all, if you have those temptations that are in your closet, I mean, in your pantry or whatever, put those things far in the back, put it out of sight, out of mind. You know, make yourself work to go do wrong things, if that makes any sense. Go put yourself to work. It needs to be a struggle to go do something wrong. So you can think about it the whole time. Like, Lord, I know I ain't supposed to be doing this. Why am I doing this? And as you're going and you're going and then boom, you're realizing like, okay, I done got here. Like make it hard for you to, don't make it easy for yourself to do something that you know is not beneficial to your health. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, thank you, Miss Terry, for the shout out. But great job on doing that. And that's a good, like, nice treat, so to speak, for yourself. Like, okay, you know, I wouldn't even call it a reward for you, but I would just say, okay, give yourself that timeline. I know I can go another two weeks without it. I know I can go another week and a half, and then I'm going to just get me a little taste. Don't go overboard when you do, but just kind of satisfy your taste buds and then move on with your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. but Going back to you, Aisha, on the, so you have the checklist complex. Does anybody else have checklist complex? Just giving yourself a checklist of things to do and you're feeling like you don't know where to start. Um, and if you do, you can throw it in the chat. You can come off mute. But if you're in the midst, especially if this program is new for you, you're just kind of getting into the swing of things. This is like your first month in, or, you know, you're only a couple of weeks into the program. It's very easy to feel like it's checklist complex, kind of associated with like the, like a, getting a job. You just got this brand new job. You ain't never worked with this company before. You're brand new to the company. You're just like, every time you turn around, you got this paper to fill out. You got to sign your John Hancock over here. You got to do this. Oh yeah, don't forget we have meetings on Wednesday. Oh, don't forget da 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 da. It's the same thing. It's like, a ch it's the same thing of like, okay, let me get into the swing of things. By your second month in, it's like, okay, you done, you get into, you, you getting used to it. By your third month in, it's like, okay, yeah, I've been here. I'm still new, but I'm, I've been here for about three months now. And, um, you know, I'm out of that 90 day situation. You know, everybody, everybody job do that like 60 to 90 day probation period or whatever they call it. But anyway, it's kind of like the same thing whenever you're doing your nutrition and your, your wellness and being physically fit. The only difference is, is that you have that option. You have the choice to say, okay, it's not that I have to do everything within a 90 day period. I need to make it work. That is, I need to make it work for me. 
what does that look like? Does it mean that I only focus on just get enough water in because that's something that I have not been doing? Does that mean that I just start with a meal plan because I know that I'm not going to be thinking about X, Y, and Z. I don't know the depths of calories and macronutrients and micronutrients or whatever. So maybe I just need to start like with that. Are you looking for the structure? Do you need to identify where you need to lean in a little bit more towards instead of trying to complete everything on the checklist? Because it is a lot. I throw out, um, not receipts, but I throw out recommendations every single week. I'm throwing out, hey, do, are you doing this? We got Hydration Tuesday. Here's Meatless Monday. There's a workout. All right, y'all. You got abs on Saturday. There's always something to do. And truth be told, it is. But you also have to scale back and know exactly where you fall in this whole process for yourself. Because nobody's on the exact same step in this process. Some of us might even feel like, Okay, well, darn, I'm back at one. Chandra, I'm going to pick on you for a second. Chandra's been training for years. She done met one of her goals, you know, met a couple of goals at this point in time. But now we're talking about, all right, building more muscle. So she might feel, I don't know, I might be putting words in her mouth. So this would be a time I wouldn't be surprised if she felt like, well, dang, Reagan, I kind of feel like um, I'm not accomplishing my, you know, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm starting over, you know, or well, not even starting over, but I'm kind of like in that, that, Point where I'm like, well, what do I need to do? Because I, I'm doing everything that I need to do. And again, I would give her the same exact advice. Mind you, she hasn't said this, but my advice would be, listen, let's lean into where we know we need to capitalize on. What are we, where are we falling short from? And that's what I encourage everybody to do because you have a lifetime to make these changes and you want to start with most important. Your hydration is key. I don't care where you are in this whole process. If you're not getting enough water in, but you're eating everything you're supposed to be eating. And then on top of that, you're working out as many times as you're supposed to be working out, but your hydration, just you're not hitting that mark with the hydration. You're, you're not going to achieve those goals that you're looking for. You're going to be training a dehydrated body. That is hard. That is very hard hard to seek any type of goal it is hard because it'll also mess with your cognitive clarity as well you'll be stressed out and don't even realize why you're stressed out you'll be tired don't even realize why you're stressed out so I'm always going to shoot for that first and not that you have to be perfect I'm not looking for folks to be doing a gallon per day that's not what I'm looking for, but I am looking for you to be adequately hydrated to get go from day to day period then from there, we'll talk about, okay, well, let's, let's look and see what it is that you are eating. So I'm going to talk about tracking. Maybe you don't need to be tracking every single day. You're not there yet. That's okay. Or maybe if you're tracking every single day, you're like, I just don't understand. Well, let's read those numbers. Or I might have said, hey, at least track one day. Track one day. That's all I want you to do. You can do it at the beginning of the day, or you can do it while you're in the bed. Okay, I had this for breakfast, had this for lunch, I had this for dinner. Okay, I did have that little Hershey kiss, all right? I did go to Smoothie King, let me put that in there. All right, uh, little Jerome brought home them Lay's chips and they were still in his backpack, so I cracked it and I ate that too. Okay, cool. Log all that stuff in so you can see exactly, all right, today wasn't a horrible day. It wasn't the best day, but it was an average day. Where do I fall on this? What does this look like? So just do the small things. It's the small things that you need to focus on and not the whole entire checklist. If that makes sense, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know too. Either way, communicate with me. Is it resonating with you or is it not? I don't want everybody to try to every single day, okay, this, 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 this. That, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for you to lean into the areas where you need to focus on for yourself. Um, but that can, we'll talk about it. Did anybody have something to say? Okay. The, um, workouts mm -hmm. being, uh, I mean, they're linked to my, um, my fitness pal and my Samsung are linked. So it ca is giving me extra calories for even steps as well as my workouts. So one day last week, I had like 900 and something calories they added to what I need to be eating, which put me like at like 3,000 calories. Mm -hmm. And you know, I ain't getting nowhere near that. Right. <laughs> I know that's and really then on top of that, you're trying to gain muscle. Exactly. 
Yeah. And this week when I got on that scale, it was horrible. So I'm, I'm like, huh? Send it to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I'm. I, I got discouraged. I ain't even gonna lie, because I'm just mm-hmm. like, man, I'm I'm about ready to say, forget this. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying not to, but it's like I don't know what else to do. It's like this week I thought I was doing good, so when I get like that, then I I do a cheat meal and then ain't good. But yeah, I just I don't know. I That's- feel like I'm not making progress. Like I've gotten to where. My last goal was was cool, but where I'm trying to get to now is like I'm not getting there. It's like I'm going in reverse now. Gotcha. Gaining, I'm only assuming gaining the wrong thing. Gaining both the muscle and the fat. Gotcha. And that's a did you okay? So remember I was saying log maybe two or three days last week. Um, give me some days so that we can look at what it is that you're doing. Um, Because honestly, you might just have to go on meal plan. You just might need to do that meal plan, put you on a meal plan for two weeks and be on point with the meal plan too. And then come off the meal plan for a week and then kind of regroup and see what's going on. Because I don't want you to live life on a meal plan but I want your body to experience and I want you to have the experience of what it's like to eat strategically for what your goals are. Because your Mm -hmm. goals are not, oh yeah, I'm looking for massive weight loss. It's very strategic. So you have to have strategy when you have those type of goals, if that makes any sense. And then when you pull, what you pull from those meal plans and going on meal plans, and this is everybody, what you pull from going on meal plans is, okay, I know that if I have, because based off this meal plan, it's saying that I can only have six to eight grams of sugar, right? This is strategic. And you're not creating this meal plan. The meal plan is already created. It's saying that I can only have six to eight grams of sugar. There's no way that I can do this 12 grams per scoop protein shake that I do for my snack. That ain't going to cut it because now I'm going over and that's that science part of it. So what I would like for you to do is go ahead while we're on this call, go ahead. And and this is for anybody. If you feel like you're in a place where you're stuck, you're like, I'm not seeing the progress that I want to see. I'm not, you know, I don't know what's going on. I need you to go ahead and log what you're doing already. If you feel like, well, and you feel like you're disciplined enough, you're ready for that. Let's put you on a meal plan for two weeks. And then let's come off of it, regroup. And so we can pull those things from those meal plans and say, okay, this is why your meal plan looks like this so that you can lose like this and or gain like this and then get to the goals that you're looking to see. So the strategy, you know, it has to be there. The science is there. We just have to start trusting into the science. And you will feel like you want to rebel against it if you're not you know, seeking the goals or, you know, you're not accomplishing the goals that you're looking to accomplish. That's everybody. You feel like you're not doing something, you're going to, well, shoot, let me go on ahead this little piece of cake. Let me go on ahead and have that little scoop of macaroni and cheese because, yes, well, let me have that, um, let me get that little red lobster biscuit because I just don't know what's going on. And <laughs> uh, catch it. Hey. <laughs> You see how she is. You know I love you. But instead of <laughs> like, you know, the habit should be, okay, something clearly is not right. What am I doing here? Me personally, Shantra, I don't want you out here eating 3,000 calories a day. That's that's crazy. That's ridiculous. And it's in your activity level. If you know that you walk in, I don't know, I'm going to just say two miles in a day because you're back in the building, you're up and down the stairs, you're moving here, there, everywhere, whatever, then you go home. Well, I'm sorry. Let me wake up. You wake up, you do a, a workout. Then you do another workout before you even have your first meal or, you know, your first real meal of the day, you done burnt dang near close to 800 calories from doing two workouts or you done burnt dang near close to six or 700 calories. On average, you're only probably eating a meal that's no more than 400 calories. There is a deficit. 
and your body will operate in that deficit. And there's nothing that anybody can do except for to feel that. How do you feel that whole, that my fitness pal is like your, your human calculator. And in your case, it's connected to your devices. So you have that cheat code already. You're giving your calculator everything that it needs to compute and then shoot out the answer. So if that's what it is, then it's like, okay, well, 3000 calories it is. But on a day-to-day, -day, like your lifestyle, to me, that just doesn't seem realistic. So you're going to have to get in another area. That physical activity is outweighing what, that's not even just from the workouts that you're doing. That's just from your life too, because the game has changed. You're back in the office now. You're back in school now. So you're going to have to give in some area. And you also have to consider your body type. Your body is listening to it. At this point, it's so conditioned to do or to react a certain type of way, that's all it knows. So the game has to change. And this is kind of like that part where it's like, darn, you can either keep going super, super hard the way that you do and say, okay, well, I'm gonna just, you know, and you, you will lose. You will continue to lose for sure. But you might not look that it won't be that desired look that you're looking for. And I know that because you and I have talked about that. So record, screenshot, send it to me. I'm getting some of y'all screenshots too. Thank y'all, by the way. Um, but record, screenshot to me, and let's go through it. And I want us to identify those areas where it's like, okay, we're going over or we're not quite meeting. That is what I'm looking for because that is where we're falling short. Um, let me see. Aisha, okay, you said that makes sense. Um, okay, we talked about preparation. So two people mentioned the preparation, still trying to prepare, had a personal chef that enjoyed cook. Okay, yes, I would have enjoyed that too. Now that person, oh, okay, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. We love her, we love her. Um, but the prepping, the prepping task, that is, and that's not just to you, but preparation is key. It is. If you don't, if you're not investing into like a meal prep program where somebody's creating, I mean, they, they cooked all the foods. All you do is pick it up, warm it up and, or pull out a refrigerator and move on. You are going to have to do that work yourself. You ready to go see uncle? Um, yes, we want to go see uncle. Um, but if you, if that's what you have, if you're doing that, then cool. If you don't have that option, and that's just not where you are, you are going to have to do that work yourself. And you are going to have to carve that time out for yourself. And it won't have to happen every single week because again, we're talking about a lifestyle. It may not happen every, every week. Life happens. Things come up. You know, practices run late. So you got to, okay, dang, I can't do it this week. So what am I going to do? You always have to have a plan for the plan. The number one plan should be, let me prepare my meals the way that I need to. I know what I'm eating for breakfast. I know what I'm eating for lunch and I know what I'm eating for dinner. Cool. I at least have my three major meals planned out. Bet. Okay. If it doesn't pan out that way, then you need to say, okay, well, it's not happening this week. It's not going on. You need to at least have in your mind what you are going to do and commit to following through. Period. There's no other way around it because if you wing it, it's when we begin to wing stuff, that's where the issues come in. But if the intention and the, the plan is there and we begin to implement that plan, whether it's plan A and or plan B, the chances of us falling off track will probably be less than anything else. So have a plan for the plan. If you know that you have a busy, say this is Friday and you're already noticing that Sunday is going to be crazy busy, then you know Sunday might not be your prep day, period. It just might not work that way. You might have to say, listen, I ain't going to do it, but I am going to get, uh, I'm going to go get that little chicken breast. I know I'm going to have got my little two greens on the side. We're going to do that for dinner. I'm going to pack a little bit up. That's going to be lunch. I got a little pack of oatmeal I can have in the morning. But as soon as I get off work on Monday, guess what I'm going to have to do? I got to get over there and I got to prep. You have to have a plan for the plan. And it could be Friday and you're computing all this in your head. Or you might say, you know what, 
this weekend is going to be crazy. I might have to go ahead and prep on Saturday instead. I might have to freeze those meals for the latter part of the week because this is going to be a crazy week. Or, you know what? I think we just going to probably go out to dinner. Wearing the, um... yeah. Oh, Jada, were you saying something to us? Oh, but either way, you always have to have a plan for the plan. The moment that you do not have that at least, that intention in your mind to say, okay, I ain't going to say the heck with it today. I just, I don't, I'm not going to say the heck with it. I do want to be intentional. I do not want to wing it. So what do I need to commit and do? I need to do something. I need to think about something. What we got in the freezer? Okay, I got a, I got two bags of frozen vegetables. I'm gonna pull them out. Okay, I ain't got no animal-based protein. Okay, I guess it's gonna be a meatless day. So, all right, I got all them vegetables right there. I'm gonna heat all those up and I'm gonna just go on and pile my vegetables on my plate and it's gonna be a meatless type of meal. Cool. Every meal doesn't have to have that animal-based protein in it if you're that person. Cause I know we do have vegetarians too. So y'all already know what you got to do. Everything don't need to have, oh, let me just make sure I'm always doing just having that. Oh, I ain't got no chicken. I ain't got no salmon. I ain't got no fish. I don't have no little beef tips. What am I going to do? You're going to eat more vegetables is what you're going to do. Just go on and pile you up some more. Instead of having that one scoop of Brussels sprouts, you need to do two or three. It's okay. And it's going to be a okay. Do you got some beans in there? You can add your beans in there. So don't always feel like, oh my God, if I don't have that animal based protein, then that's it. That's not the truth. Do not feel that way at all. Does anybody feel like um, they feel that way? Like, dang, we ain't got no meat. So we ain't got no full complete meal. Does anybody feel that way? Just you might not even like think it, but like, as I'm saying it, does that resonate with you? Um, let me see. Yes. Okay. Who just said yes? Aisha. Hey, Aisha. Okay. So, and I'm pretty sure that you're not alone on that too. I know in my household, that's a conversation that we have. We're not vegan. We're not vegetarian or pescatarian or anything like that. But sometimes, you know, boo thing will ask, babe, what you want to eat for dinner? And I'm like, okay, well, I got a little piece of red snapper, all right? Yeah, I'm always starting there. My my The way I road map my meals, I start with that animal-based protein. And it's not all the time, and I'm really trying to work my way out of doing that because, again, that's how I grew up. I'm from the country. This is what we do. You got your chicken, you got this, and then you got your vegetables, and you got your little, uh, you got your rice and gravy on the side, or you got your dinner roll, and that's your complete meal. Whoa have to restructure all of that. The most important part of the meal is your vegetables. It's not negating that animal-based protein, but you do pull proteins from other items outside of animal, animal byproducts, period. So start prioritizing those vegetables. Load up on those frozen vegetables in weeks where you know that it's gonna be crazy. They like a dollar for a bag, a dollar, two, three dollars a bag for frozen vegetables. Load up on those, load up on them for those last minute moments. Those steam fresh, what are they called? Steamable, steam fresh, I might be making it up. Steam fresh, something like that. Load up on those things for those last minute meals. I promise you that will be a game changer for yourself. And it's okay to pull it out, slap it in the microwave, get your shower, come on back out, put a little garlic on it, and then move on so that you're having something. Um, Jada said, Publix, buy one, get one for steamable veggies. Period. That's yes. Get your buy one, get ones from Publix, Kroger, wherever, but always have something prepared there. You want to gravitate towards those frozen items opposed to those canned items, just so you know, like, okay, it's something quick because everybody, mom, well, I'm going to speak about my mama and daddy. They were the kings and queens. Of, Let me pull that out. Get them green beans out and pop the can open, rent, rinse them out in the can, rinse the little salt off and then pour them in there and put the, uh, put the thing on medium and let it heat up. Put a little hot sauce, put a little garlic, put a little black pepper and a little sea salt on it and call it a day. Okay, you can cut all that out and simply go get your frozen vegetables, pop that in the microwave, go get your shower, pull it out, and then you pair that with whatever. So don't feel like, okay, if I don't have everything out and it's 
bowls and with the cap and the top on it or whatever that I'm all of a sudden not prepared. You will, and I repeat, you will have those weeks where it, you're going to be off, but you need to have a backup plan for that. And so what I'm saying that backup plan is frozen vegetables. You might not have the, oh, we cutting up our carrots this week, our squash, our zucchini, and you might not have that type of a lifestyle. Lean into the frozen options. Lean into the frozen options. Let that be your plan B. And it, like, just keep them stacked in your freezer and pull them puppies out whenever you need to pull them out and begin to implement that, that practice into your weekly habits. Y'all feel me? Do you feel me? And I hope that's helpful. And I'm pretty sure some of y'all are already doing it, but it's also the way that you think about your process. Don't always think about it as, oh, I got to chop up everything on Sunday. Like how I'm pretty sure you see on Instagram and stuff, because everybody's lifestyle might not be like that. Y'all are moms, you know, family might be relying on you to cook all the meals. Hubby might not be the lead cook in the household. You might be the lead um, uh, cook in the household. So everything is falling on you. You got to make things work for your lifestyle and for you. And you can't forget about you in the process. You done bought, you done went to Costco, Sam's and whatever. And you done bought everything for everybody else. But when it comes time for your meals, then you looking around like, well, I guess I'm gonna just grab that bag of Cheetos that Trey gonna have for lunch. No, that's not, no, that's not helpful for you. Mm-mm. You might not have, again, you might not have the time to prep everything on Sundays. If you do great or prepping everything on Mondays or whenever your prep day is, you might not have that option. Have a backup plan. Even if you know that you're going to pick up something at night to eat, go ahead and think about, okay, what is what I'm going to do? I know and commit to it. I'm not going to get the Philly chicken sandwich that I like to get from this restaurant or whatever. I'm making that up. You might need to say, okay, I know that they got a side salad. I'm going to grab that side salad. Okay. They usually do some real good steamed vegetables or they do real good roasted vegetables or, you know, they do really good um, home cooked vegetables. So let me get a vegetable plate from there. That's what I'm going to do or whatever. Oh, okay. They got a little piece. I'm not going to do the fried fish this time. I'm going to do the baked fish. Commit in your mind what you're going to do. Even if it's not the best of best restaurants, make the best decision make the best, especially if it's not happening all the time. That's how you commit to that lifestyle change. That's how you, you change the game for yourself. Um, yes, great point, Jada. Great, 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 great point. I have learned to be self, learned to be selfish with my cooking. You have to, I feel like I know exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes we'll be so worried about trying to fend for everybody else that we forget about ourselves. That is not cool. You got to be here to help fend for everybody else. So you got to fend for yourself first. So that's what's up. You have to. And it's not being, you know, I wouldn't even look at it as being selfish in a, a, a negative light. I would look at it as being cognizant, being, you know, self-conscious. You have to do that for yourself because it's you. It's for you. If you're not well, nobody else benefits from it, period. So you have to put you first. I'm glad that you're doing that. Be selfish with your cooking. Good, good for you. Any other, um, what other topics am I missing out on? Um, some of the things that we talked about, and I'm gonna make sure that I implement these into the calendar and be more intentional about Reset Sunday. I do want you to let me know if Reset Sundays are helpful. Um, I was thinking about reducing it to every other week. I know my schedule is changing as we get into these um, these summer, these more warm months. My schedule is changing, um, but I do enjoy having this accountability conversation or at least one time a week. I love it, but I was thinking, you know, well, maybe it's, is it redundant? Is it not helpful? Y'all communicate with me and let me know what works for you and what does not work for you. Because again, my program is to service y'all. It ain't to service me, it's to service you guys. So I want y'all to be greedy and get what you can get from me. And I want to make sure that I have the platform where you can pull it from. So communicate that with me on things that you want me to cover. Or if you feel like I'm not spending enough time on, let me know. I know earlier we said that the tips are helpful. I think Taz mentioned that. Um, I need to spend more time talking about detoxing. So we'll talk about that at the beginning of the month in April. Um, I want to, or matter of fact, 
probably talk about it next week so that you can prepare for the beginning of April. Um, but detoxing infused waters. And if you all are not familiar with the nutrition calendar, it is available up there. There are recipes up there for your infused water and to detox. I believe in detoxing at least one time a month. I'll go ahead and say that. And detoxing, not necessarily meaning foregoing meals, but being intentional about what it is that you are eating and assisting your body in the cleansing, the natural cleansing process of your blood. Your blood is the number one communicator outside of the brain in your body, but you need that blood and your blood has to be clean, period. It literally is the highway. It drives everything everywhere it needs to go. You want clean blood pump, pumping to every part of your body, right or wrong. Right, you ain't got to answer. You do, that's what you want. So um, I believe in doing that just to kind of rid your body from the toxins, natural toxins that kind of get caught up. We eat like a, Miss here, you know, I'm gonna pick on you. We eat a little red lobster biscuit. That thing is still in your, your system. It is in your system. Had a bad week. You know, you just say, all right, bump it. The heck with it. I'm going to just have, you know, I'm going to just eat this little piece of cake instead because it ain't hurting nobody. I'm pissed. I'm mad. It made me mad at work. Okay. Or I had these glasses of wine. So we just pull these things into our body. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily always release from our body. So you do want to be intentional about detoxing at least one time per month. Um, but then again, don't make this a checklist thing. If you're there, then do that. If not, cool, it's no stress. There are other ways to go about it. Um, but infused waters, I love infused waters because those are good ways to be intentional about keeping the body not only hydrated, but also a natural way to detox as well. Again, not foregoing meals, just adding it in as a compliment. Um, protein was another thing that was brought up. We'll spend more time on that. Uh, meatless Mondays and sweetless. Uh, we said that the focus days are helpful. So if you feel like if you're looking at the nutrition calendar and is everybody successful with pulling, has everybody been successful with pulling up the nutrition calendar? Let me know that. If you have not been successful with pulling up the nutrition calendar, I definitely want you to have access to that because it is a really good tool just to have um, and say, you know what, at least one time a week, one thing I'm going to add to do is one time a week, I'm going to commit to doing meatless Monday or one time a week, I'm going to make sure that I commit to low sodium Saturdays. My suggestion, especially if you're if you're feeling like you're in a rut and you don't know necessarily which way to go. Or you're like, I'm just getting started out. I don't, I don't know. Like, where, where do I need to start? I would pick the, the day that you know that you struggle with the most. Meaning if you normally eat out on Saturdays and you know, you know that you're going to go to the Chick-fil-A and get that little fry and you're going to dip it in your cookies and cream shake because that's just your thing on Saturdays. I would lean into low sodium Saturdays. I would, I would start there. That's where you need to begin because clearly that is one of your problem areas. Or if you know that you're not the one who gets enough protein or you're just like, well, all I know to be protein is chicken. And Reagan, I can't eat enough. I can't eat no more chicken. If I do, I'm going to start clucking. Okay, well, whoa, we don't want you to begin to cluck, but let's look at some other options for protein. Cool, start there. Lean into the areas where you're not as confident is what I'm getting at. And that is something that I would say, okay, you got your hydration down, Pat, you're doing good with that. You're getting enough sleep. You know, you're getting your workouts. You're finding, okay, you're not make, you might not be doing all the workouts, but you're like, okay, I do my little BU flex. I do my little walking with my girlfriends. I, I walk during uh, Sierra's cheerleading practice. Okay, fine. I'm doing what I need to do, but I do need to start paying attention to my eating. So let me pick one of these days and lean into that. That nutrition calendar is very beneficial. Um, but the focus days, and I think we all, well, most of us agree that we like the focus days, sweet substitutes. We'll talk about sweet substitutes, especially whenever you have those times of the month where you're like, Ugh, this is that time for me. I'm a sweets person. If you are a sweets person like me, you need something. Well, we tell ourselves this, but you feel the need of having something to replace you know, maybe getting a candy bar or, or maybe you're a, a salty person. You just like the, the salty or the, you know, you just, some people are sweet people. Some people are salty people. 
whatever, but you need something to replace that. That is a habit. That is something that we need to spend more time talking about too and how to maneuver through those times and moments and how to get over that hump um, on a more consistent side so that you don't just say, oh, well, that's just the way I am and you become comfortable, comfortable with that. I don't want you to feel comfortable with the things that you know that we all know are not beneficial for you. We need to find a way to get around it. So, um, and prepping, prepping is going to be a thing. We just had a conversation about that, but we'll be, we'll always be mindful. And of course, if you have tips that work for you, we're all different. Throw your tips in there. Let your, you know, throw them in the group me. If you're not in the group me or not active in the group me, get in there say, Hey, Reagan, what's the link? I'll direct you to the link or I'll just shoot it right over to you. But that is what our community is for. Everybody doesn't always have all of the answers, but little things that we're doing could help be helpful to someone else. So I want y'all to uh, lean into that. Do that. Um, struggle with, uh-oh. Oh, scheduling. Mm, my pen must have went out. Struggle with scheduling. We talked about scheduling, I believe a couple weeks ago, we talked about scheduling and we actually do need to bring that back up. If you do not have your schedule, this is what I kind of go off of. From the moment that you wake up, you have an hour, an hour time frame to break your fast. And that's why breakfast preparation is so important or meal one preparation is so important. You have to know okay, what are my goals? Am I doing body fat loss? Am I trying to lose body fat? Am I trying to do muscle gain? Am I trying to, you know, maintain my shape, my figure, my size, my weight? Am I trying to do massive weight loss? Okay, well, whatever that goal is, you absolutely must break your fast within an hour of being awake. Reason being, you hadn't had a meal since the day before at whatever time. I hear a lot of us say, oh yeah, Reagan, I try not to eat after seven. I try not to eat after eight o'clock. You know, I don't want to eat too late. Love it. I think that's totally fine. Just know, you got to think about it. If your cutoff time is at seven o'clock, 7.30, whatever, then you go to bed at 9.30, about 10 o'clock. And then you wake up about six o'clock in the morning and then you go on and have a whole workout and you ain't had nothing. You talking about 12, 13 hours and your body hasn't had anything, nothing. You can't expect your body to perform without the resources that are necessary. You can't do that. That's like, again, you starting out a job and they want you to have a full report uh, furnished by two o'clock p.m. that afternoon and you just started and you ain't even got no computer and no data. How you gonna do that? It's impossible. Like, so also think about what you're asking your body to do. What are you requesting your body to do for you? And build out your roadmap. Say, okay, if I'm looking for this, it requires X, Y, and Z. That's that meat and potatoes. That's that middle part right there. We're all looking for this. We're, we're trying to figure out this over here and we on this side over here. This is, this is the roadmap. This is the area of opportunity right here. That is, that's the most important part. So be mindful of what you're requesting of your body and then fill in that gap right there. That is what I'm here for, to fill in the gap. So prepping, uh, scheduling, scheduling is very important, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. A lot of you, I just want y'all to eat enough. A lot of us just are not eating enough for what we're asking our bodies to do. We're just not eating enough. Um, Chandra brought up the example about the, um, and Chandra, I did get your, um, your screenshot too. Ladies, do not forget if you're having an issue, just take this moment while I'm rambling and running my big old mouth, go ahead and just log, log, maybe log what you had today or what you plan to have today screenshot it and send it to me. Chandra, I am going to pick on you for a second. What I want you to do, so you you gave me this, um, this view. I want you to turn it to the, I want you to turn it to the side. Do you have that ability to do so? To turn it sideways so it can elongate that whole scale? And yeah, you do? The, um, okay. Of it. All right. It I'm sorry, I kept cutting you off. Say it one more time. Um, yeah, I had to go in a different 
um figure it out i'll figure it out okay because yeah. it's, it's i would have to do like several screenshots of it uh, the long way yeah okay yeah and i mean it's cool i'll make it work with this don't worry about it um but yes a lot of us are just operating in a deficit we're looking for these goals but we're just not meeting or we're getting too much of something that is not what we need to get too much of so again our that tool that resource and i'm just looking for one day at this moment if i've told you offline we had our nutrition check-in i want three days from you i definitely want three days if i'm just if this is your first time hearing me say anything about it just give me one day that's all i need so that we can start to reconfigure what it is that you're eating and identify those foods they might be something that you just always eat it might be like Reagan, I love the little healthy 100 calorie, whatever. And, you know, it's my go to, they're my stack. And that could be your, your problem. You know, it might be 100 calories, but it might be 20 grams of fat. I don't know. So just keep me, um, give that to me if you can, so that I can um, give you my two cents if that's what you're in need of. And checklist complex. Let go of the checklist complex, focus on one area at a time. That is like my, I know I just ran through a whole laundry list of everything, but if we're having our weekly check-in and I'm telling you to focus only on, you know, I might give you, most times I give you three things to focus on and nine times out of 10 is going to be water. Water is going to be on that list. That's a given. That's for everybody. Water is going to be on that list, but there might be those two other things. I might say, okay, you know, well, uh, give me one day of blah, 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 blah. Or it might be, hey, I just want you to hop on to BU Buns on Thursdays because you might be having an issue with getting your workout routine together. These are common everyday issues. So follow that. Think about yourself. Think about the things that we've talked about offline in our weekly check-in and you lean into that and go for it, Okay. Um, but let go of the checklist complex. You have enough on your plate already as it is. I just want you to be able to function on a day-to-day -day basis, the way that your body should function. And I promise you, when you begin that consistency of getting these things together, the rest will come into place. Not saying that, oh yeah, all your problems will be fixed and you can live life and you can walk off into the sunset. There will be work to do, but for the most part, your body will not be operating in a deficit. It will not be going in need. Um, Aisha, you mentioned giving more tips on prepping and we'll do that. Let's, um, I know we missed our session on Wednesday. Forgive me, please forgive me. Um, but we need to make that up and we definitely need to talk so that we can get you on the right page and right path and getting you set the way that you need to, especially if prepping is an issue. And Taz, I heard you loud and clear about your prepping issues. We'll work through them. It's a progress. I mean, yeah, it's a process, not a progress. It's a process. So keep going, keep pushing. Don't give up on it. Don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself some grace, you know, give yourself some grace through this process because you're talking about a life time change that's a lot that is a whole lot a lifetime change okay questions any questions you can come off mute or you can put them in the chat yes Taz. i mean not taz um chandra yes helpful very helpful and another thing i want you to do chandra is to I feel like there's a way that you can see your activity level too. We're going to talk offline. Let's talk offline. Because you have a very, at this point, you have a very, like, we got it's strategy. It's just strategy. I got yours too, Aisha. Thank you. Same thing I want you to do, Aisha, is turn yours to the side. Chandra, I'm going to use yours as an example so she can see what I'm talking about. If you turn it the long way, like if you turn your camera, I mean, your, whenever you're logging your food in and you turn it to the side, it's going to expand that entire, um, that entire, what is this, form, graph, whatever. Do that so that it'll put your calories, carbs, fat, protein, sodium, and sugars at the top. 
And we're only going to focus on your macronutrients. But I did see your screenshot come through. Um, yes. But I want to, uh, to you, Chandra, personally, I want to look into your activity logging and go from there. Any other questions, you guys, for me? Any questions? Any questions? I just sent you the screenshot. Boom. Yeah. So that's you burning dang near a thousand. And that's where that additional thousand is coming from from the thousand that you're burning. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. That is a lot. Now, if, and that's the reason why those numbers are so high, it goes back to the whole statement of the more you do, the more you must consume. You know, I say that all the time. And it's, it's the truth. The more you do, the more you will consume. And you can, you can overtrain. You can like it is people do overtrain or the same way you can overeat you can overtrain so um we will yeah we'll switch some things out cuz i want to get more in depth as to what every what all of these different things are and I want to make sure that you're also tracking the, well, no, it's tracking it for you. I want to make sure you're, what you're tracking your, um, your workouts. I want to make sure you're tracking your workouts correctly too. So we'll get into that. Taz, I see that you had your hand raised, but then you said no. So I'm assuming that you're good. No to the questions, but to add on what you were just saying, mm -hmm. we talked about this the other day, Chandra and I, about how we're working out like twice a day for six days. And it's like when we are logging in our meals and it's like, well, good Lord, what are we going to do? So it's like, probably have to add another meal, but it's like, when do you have time for another meal? The more you do, the more you consume. Again, like, yeah, I don't, you can either, now if you love, because some people just, they thoroughly enjoy their working out. I think that's a great thing. I think that's a great thing. But when you begin to train your body to a point, and I know this because it's me, like I know it. And it's the life that, you know, I live, my metabolism is through the roof. There's no way, and you can change it so that your metabolism does change. That's how people lose the weight. So when you get to that point, where your metabolism is doing what it's supposed to do because you're, you know, you're in fact losing, you're burning, you're how you're supposed to. But then on top of that, you add in a normally active lifestyle, i.e. going back into the building, being up and down, you know, you're not sitting behind a computer desk like you were at home or whatever all day. Now you're up, you're moving around. So naturally you're moving more. Then on top of that, you add in not one, but two additional workouts to your normally active lifestyle you if that's the way that you want to live your life then you have to and you want to still work the goals because it'd be different if you like oh yeah you know I just I ain't worried about none of that you know I'm where I'm at, I work I'm where I want to be or whatever and you just go on from there then cool that's one thing but you have very aggressive goals so it goes back to the whole phrase of the more you do the more you must consume that's the science of the body that's the science of the body whenever you are goal oriented. So it doesn't mean that you have to cut out your workouts. It's just the type of workouts that you're doing. That's what it is. It might not be in a line with where you are as a person anymore. So if you had, I'm going to just use the 47 minute or what have you. Yeah, the 47 minute general or generic workout that you're doing. That's completely different. If it's cardio, that's one thing, but that's Imagine if you were doing 47 minutes of just weight training, 47 minutes of weight training versus 47 minutes of cardio, steady state cardio or what have you are two completely different workouts. They tap in two completely different chambers whenever it comes to your exercising. That's just that, that it just is what it is. Nobody. Yeah, it just is what it is. So the way you would eat for that 47 minute weight training regimen and that 47 minute cardio regimen are two completely different eating styles. So it, I guess it just breaks down to what it is that you are doing. Um, yeah. 
So, I mean, if y'all want to, I'm actually going to stop and um, stop the recording and conclude Reset Sunday. And I'm going to hang back to go a little bit more in depth with you all, if that's what you're in need of. Or we can reschedule just a one-on-one if necessary. But thank y'all for attending Reset Sunday.